I'm Kimberly with the Fat Quarter Shop and today we're going to work on putting mitered borders on our quilts. So we've got two quilts here today and to show you the difference we've used the same fabrics. On our traditional border your stripe just starts and it stops abruptly and starts again and it doesn't have a continuous feel. But on our mitered border the stripe just runs in a continuous circle and it just gives a seamless and classic look. Our first step is to square up our quilt top. So you're just gonna take a square ruler, put it on each of your corners and square it up. If anything needs to be trimmed, you wanna trim now. Today we're gonna be working with the 18 and a half by 20 and a half inch rectangle and our cut strips are gonna be five and a half inches wide. To determine the length of your strip, we're gonna use this formula. You're gonna take your size of your first border, which is 20 and a half inches, plus you're gonna take the width of your cut border times two, which is five and a half inches, plus you're adding four inches so that you have room to fold. So if we take 20 and a half inches plus five and a half inches times two plus four inches, we get 35 and a half inches. So we've cut our border length 35 and a half inches already, and now we're gonna cut our width of our strip. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our ruler and we need to start and stop each stripe in the same spot so that we get that continuous look that we talked about earlier. So this is a really easy one to cut because we've got a beaded stripe. We're going to put the edge of our ruler right against the edge of a bead. And we're just going to take our time and just really get it lined up perfectly. And then we're just going to cut. And then just move your fabric and make your second cut just following the bead. Now you're going to just cut your strip five and a half inches. Now we've got our first border cut. We're going to put a marker where we made our first cut, where we had lined up our ruler with the bead. The reason we're doing that is we're going to attach this side that has the marker to our quilt top. That is going to make sure each of your stripes meet up when you join on the diagonal. So we've cut both of our border strips for our 20 and a half inch side. Our next step is to mark the center of each of your 20 and a half inch sides on your quilt top. And now we're going to mark the center of each of our border strips. So we're going to first mark in the center and then we need to mark our border to be 20 and a half inches wide. So we're going to start in the center and we're going to mark 10 and a quarter inches out from the center on both sides. And so you can see our total width is 20 and a half inches and we've marked our center. We're going to continue and do that on our second strip as well. So now we're going to attach our borders to our quilt top. We're going to line up our centers and pin. And then we're going to line up each edge that we marked and pin on each end. and then put any pins in between that you want. And we're gonna turn and do the opposite end at the same time. So now we're gonna measure a quarter inch in from the edge of our quilt top. You're gonna just measure in and make a marker. We're going to do that on all four sides. 
We're going to sew from each of our marked lines from point to point using a 2.0 stitch length and back stitch at the beginning and the end. If you accidentally sew past your line, you're going to want to unstitch that and start over because it's very important to get this accurate quarter inch. So let's go sew. We're going to put our needle down directly into the drawn line and we're going to take a few stitches and back stitch. When you get to the end, just sew directly to the line and then backstitch. Now we've sewn both of our borders to our 20 and a half inch side and we press towards our border. Now let's move on to our 18 and a half inch side border. Let's review our formula. We're going to start with 18 and a half inches for the length of our border plus five and a half inches times two plus four inches, which is going to give us 33 and a half inches. We've gone ahead and cut both of our borders for our 18 and a half inch side using the techniques from before, and now we're ready to put them onto our quilt. We're going to again mark the centers and place your fabric down. Now when you get to your corners, you're going to just move this gently out of the way so you can see your corner, line up the edge, and pin. So now we're going to flip our quilt top over and this time we're going to start stitching where our previous stitches left off and if you put your needle down exactly in that ending spot, you're going to have no puckers and no open spots. So now we've got our four borders attached and you can see that you've got tails hanging off and it's supposed to look like that and go ahead and make sure all your borders are pressed towards your border. You're going to just fold your quilt on the diagonal and your focus is going to be right here. So just completely ignore all of this over here. It's not relevant at all. What you want to do is line up your border strips that are right sides together. You're lining up the top and the bottom and you're just going to put a lot of pins so that stays straight. Okay, so now at this little intersection on the bottom, you've got your border pressing towards your border. You need to flip that seam up and pin it. By doing that, when we start stitching, you're not going to get a pucker. So now we've got all of this lined up. We're going to take any ruler that has a 45 degree angle. Most of the rulers have them. Just kind of push where you can see your seam. And you're going to take your ruler and line up the 45 degree angle 100% on the stitches. Right where your previous stitch ended, we're going to start marking and we're going to draw on our border on the edge. So now you've got your perfect miter. We're going to go to our sewing machine and we're going to use, you know, the same stitch length, back stitch, but you need to start stitching where your stitch is left off instead of here. If you start stitching at the end, you might get a pucker. So we're going to start here.
we've sewn our first border. First, what you want to do is just look at your border and make sure you like it. This one looks great. You just want to make sure you don't have any puckers, no gaps, you know, just really look over it. If it's, if it's got something, take it back, fix it before you cut. We're going to pull it back, make sure everything is out of the way, just kind of get everything flat, and just cut a quarter inch away from your seam. And now we're going to press. We're going to press from the back and we're going to press this seam, the miter, open. Just press it with your fingers and run the iron with the tip right along the crease. Then you want to take this flap and press it in. And now this is going to lay really flat and give you a really nice finish. We're going to flip over and just starch on the top and just give it a nice press. And now we've got a perfectly mitered corner and you can see how nicely our stripes are lining up with each other. So now you're just going to continue and you're going to miter all four of your corners and you're just going to get that perfect look for your quilt. Now if you wanted to have a quilt that has more than one border that looks something like this, what you're going to want to do is sew all your border pieces together first and then miter them. Thanks for sewing with me today and I hope these tips are going to give you that perfect look to your next quilt. See you next time.